social network said it would partner with a nonprofit group to oversee hate postings. Yet any action from Facebook is likely to stoke concerns about free speech. In the past, the social network has come under suspicion for suppressing or deleting posts and groups that advocate unpopular beliefs. Well, guess what? Michael Savage is proud to tell you that while I was also banned in Britain, I'm the only member of the American media proudly banned by this uh, false government now running England. I've also been sort of mo modified, my posts have been modified by Zuckerberg's uh, evil minions. Why am I telling you this? Why? Instead of, instead of saying that he'll be working on stopping the postings of Arabs and others who are plotting to destroy Western civilization, instead of uh, the communist potato-faced evil witch Merkel telling Zuckerberg her cohort to stop the jihadists from posting how they're going to kill the West, how, how they're going to impose uh, Sharia law. They talk about repressing those who would like to stop the jihadists. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So I have to make another point that I made a, week, a couple of weeks ago that went over everyone's head. I think it's one of my most interesting points. Hitler invaded other countries, and we all know he was evil. That's a given. History has judged Hitler to be evil. He invaded other countries. He did terrible things. Merkel and Obama are invading their own nation with foreigners. They are just as crazy. For the same ends that Hitler wanted, which was the domination, the domination and control. Oh, let's just say for the same reasons of domination and control. Merkel and Obama for domination and control are invading their own nations. In this case, with Chinese, with Mexicans, and with Arabic-speaking Muslims. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth and financial future. Call 1-800-289-2640. The issue of reviewing social media for those who are obtaining visas, I think, may have gotten garbled a little bit. Garbled? Because there, there may be... Garbled? A, it, it's important to distinguish between posts that are public, social media on a Facebook page. You listen to the double talker and the versus liar. Versus private communications uh, through various All right, social media. This is or beyond apps. comprehension. Any other president would have been impeached or at least fired his head of DHS, his head of CIA. He would have fired his entire intelligence apparatus. So they ask the liar about how did you not catch the two Muslims who committed the massacre in San Bernardino when they were boasting they were going to be doing something like it on social media for years, for God's sake. You're monitoring conservatives. You're snooping in on every conservative in America, you liar, you. You got the NSA spying on every domestic enemy, and you don't listen to the Muslims plotting to blow us up? The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person. Home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Yes, indeed. Keep unemployment high by bringing millions of illegal aliens who don't work. Increase the welfare state. Increase the votership for the socialist uh, machine. You get what's going on. I mean, there's a revolt going on in the country. You have a revolutionary administration. But the problem for most people is they can't put the pieces together. You have a Marxist revolutionary in the White House. You say, that's impossible. He has not taken over the means of production. He has not taken over the means of distribution. Well, you're right. In a limited sense, you are correct. But you're wrong in the bigger sense. Because those were the means of controlling a population in Russia in 1915, 16, 17 was production and distribution. But now it's 100 years later and we're living in the United States of America. You don't need to take over the means of production and distribution to control the population. He's controlling the population by taking over the media, by taking over every aspect, every avenue of the government, every aspect of the media. He owns it all. 
He owns it all. He owns Zuckerberg, lock, stock, and barrel. Now, you may think that Zuckerberg's worth $56 billion, and he's independent. He wouldn't last one second if he stepped out of line with regard to this administration. He'd be out of business so fast, you couldn't even say the word Marky Boy. You couldn't even say Marky Boy before he'd be out of business. But because he is a useful tool of the most power-mad president in American history, he thrives and makes more money than ever. The same is true for Bill Gates. The same is true for everyone else making billions of dollars right now. They are tools of the government. If they weren't useful tools of the government, they wouldn't last a day. So what does it have to do with the price of wheat or of eggs? Maybe nothing, maybe something. If you just tuned in, it's hard to follow me. Many of you who listen to this, who are driving around in a car in between shopping, I mean, I mean, after all, Christmas is just around the corner, right? It's next week, and your mind is supposed to be on, I don't know, what's it supposed to be on, Santa Claus? Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, a fat white man coming down a chimney in a red suit? I don't know what it's supposed to be. Must you shut your mind off around this time of year with the shopping frenzy? You know, as a former uh, anthropologist in one of my iterations for a number of years, I spent years as an anthropologist, I guess once an anthropologist, always an anthropologist. Anthropology is just the study of people is what it comes down to. So I had the, the, the uh, opportunity of living in villages in the South Pacific and studying what you'd call village society, primitive. It's not primitive in that sense, but village society, which was quite different than our society at the time. And you learn certain things about human beings in such settings, marriage. You have to read all of the great Malinowski and all the others to understand anthropology. Those of you who studied it know what I'm talking about. In fact, one of the great books is The mind, the Savage Mind, La Pensée Sauvage, which I had to read in the original French in a seminar one summer with a Harvard professor who was in the university. I was his only student. I, I swear to God, he made me read The Savage Mind in the original French and discuss it with him, La Pensée Sauvage. I'll never forget it. It was written by Claude Lévy-Strauss. That was long before the age of Savage on the radio. The Savage Mind was already being discussed. But the point I'm making is if you study the primitive mind, the semi-primitive mind, or the primitive mind, and I've always been interested in the more authentic base mind rather than the modified, um, the modified minds of our time, you come to certain conclusions. But things remain the same whether it's on a village level or an international level. There's average people who want to be left alone to do what they want to do, which is hunt and fornicate, basically. And then there are exceptional people who want to create things, the artists, whether they be in a village or a nation. And then there are the power mad, those who want to control everybody else, the insane. I would say anyone who wants to rule over people are crazy. I don't care who they are. Anyone who wants to rule over others is insane by definition. I have no desire. I work alone. I mean, I have two great guys in Dallas. I see them on a computer screen. <laughs> I don't even meet these two wonderful guys. I don't like to work with people because I don't like people interfering with my thinking. I like to I like to find answers wherever I have to go. I and mean, believe me, I can find more answers on the internet than I ever found in talking to people. How many people can you actually talk to? How many people can you actually talk to to get original ideas in, in your average day, week, or month? Very hard. What, are you going to walk the streets and look for an intelligent person? You're going to find an intelligent person in a bar? No. Rarely. Probably never. Uh, okay, so you're going to go to a university and you're going to find really brilliant minds who are teaching you to uh, get rid of the First Amendment, teaching you that there's a thing called white privilege, teaching you that man and woman are an extinct species. Uh, they don't even exist. There's no differential between man and woman. That's what you want from the universities today? So I don't really need to go to the university to find ideas. I can find them in ways I could never imagine before. I don't really even have to leave my house to have conversations with the most brilliant minds or find the most interesting things on earth, right in my own, the comfort of my own house and in my own pajamas. But there's certain things that never change, whether it's on a village level or on a, a national level, which there are power mad people. Right now we have the most power mad person in the history of this country getting away with virtual anything, he, virtually anything he wants, anything, anything. She says, okay, well, we know that. Now can we move on? Now tell us a dog story. Now let's move on. Tell me a dog story. Give me an inspirational story. Robert, do we have that inspirational piece that someone posted on YouTube? I thought it was pretty good. I didn't even know anyone did this. Someone loves me so much that they took one of my monologues from December 15th 
And it just came out of me. I don't know where these things come from, honest to God. Honest to God, they come from God is where they come from. I'm going through a very low point right now. i, I got to admit it to you. I, I don't have a high inspiration. I'm working on my Teddy book. I'm working on another big project. I'm working on my all of my films from uh, years ago, the 8mm film project. It's been a five-year project. I am working on putting together my writings going back to 1966. I'm working on a new journal book with World Net Daily. I'm, I'm doing an awful lot, to be honest with you. These are all the puzzles I have around my studio. Each one of these projects has its own table. This is how I found to do things, by the way. A little hint for those of you out there who are awed by my abilities. Create a table, a separate table for each project, and lay it out on the table. But don't clutter the table with three projects at once, because you're liable to get nothing done. I'm telling you how it works. You can't interchange the, you can't intermix the puzzles together. If you set up a table just for this project, another one for that project, I mean, you need a space for it, obviously. But what's a house for? What do you need thing? What do you need a couch in your house for? What? Or maybe you're normal and you have people come over. I don't. So instead of a sofa, I have another desk. If I could, I'd get rid of my bed and put another desk in my bedroom. <laughs> the way things are going, every room in my house has got another project on it. And I have more, more, more projects than I have desks. I don't know what to do. I have to get a bigger house. But I don't have the time or the patience to look for a bigger house. They're all cluttered anyway. Every dwelling I have, wherever it may be, Los Angeles or Florida, it's the same thing. Cluttered to death with my projects. I don't know how. I get it I get it all done, but somehow it all comes together. So somebody listening to this show heard me give an inspiring speech on the fifteenth of December. I haven't listened to it. I hope it's not an embarrassment and a setup, Robert. So as you play it, they say it's Michael Savage inspirational talk. If it gets off the track or they've done something to it, we'll cut it, okay? Let's play it raw. Let's hear it. Where is it? <laughs> I intend to make this day forward the first day of the rest of my life. We can change our lives. You say, well, what's wrong with your life, Michael? Well, it's not that there's anything wrong with my life, but it's not what I want it to be. I don't feel that I'm inspiring people in the way I want to inspire them. You see, you can inspire through hate. You can inspire through love, hope, humor, the positives. I look at the history of the world, and I look at the world today, and I realize that if we don't inspire each other through positive attributes, love, hope, and humor, we're going to descend into the barbarism of the left and the barbarism of ISIS. You like me to be hard. You like me to be tough. You like me to give you the breaking news. You like me to be cynical. You like me to be analytical. You like me to give you stuff that you don't hear anyone else. I get that. But there's a limit to that. There's a lot of area beyond all of that. I think of Christmas. Christianity is the religion of peace. Christianity is the true religion of peace. Turn the other cheek. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. These are messages that come from Christianity. What can you do in an age of deceit and lies and terror? You can go to church again. However unneeding you think you really are, you know in your heart that there's something missing in you. You know that you crave something greater. Because the human being is not a dog. We are unique creatures. And we need something different than the bear, the dog, the snake, and the eagle. What is that thing that we need? It's that thing called God. has promulgated the idea and promoted the idea that we only need food and fornication. And so when people are empty, that's what they seek. And when they're really empty, what happens? They become drug addicts. They start with marijuana and they end up with heroin, crack, you name it. As God has been driven out of America, drugs have entered America. What does an empty soul look to do? An empty soul looks to fill itself. Just as an empty vessel needs to be filled with a liquid to be complete, an empty human being needs to fill itself to be complete. And how does it fill itself? I know, again, many of you will laugh because you're cynical. It's through those things I'm talking about, inspiration. Do you think a musician can play 
One day without inspiration from somewhere. The greatest